Hey everybody, Sponge Murphy here. How you all getting on today? A while ago I did an eBay loot video showing that I had bought the old Metal Vermin Lord model. And it's one of those models that I've wanted for a long time. It's always been a favourite of mine and I always wanted to add it into my army. So finally I started painting it a few days ago. I really enjoyed it. It really is a nice model to paint, to sit down and to look at. And I was trying to think, why do I like this model so much? Like it's old, it's metal, I hate metal models, I hate painting because the chip so much. But uh, it has that old Warhammer Fantasy charm. Because the, the new Vermin Lords, as, as nice as they are, they're bigger and everything. When I look at this one, it's, it's just something about it, it has that old timey charm. Uh, that, some, that some of the newer models don't really have anymore. Um, but I really have enjoyed painting it. It's an awesome model. I can't wait until he's finished to put into my army. To put him up on the shelf. He's going to look so cool. Um, but let's just have a look and see how far I've gotten along with it. Alright, so here we are. He is... He, there's a good portion of him done. He is almost finished. I'm getting there with him. His skin was done with... I used Rackard Flesh. It was the first time I ever used Rackard Flesh, so... That was okay. It's a very kind of darkish skin tone, very much like I think it was the Dark Elf um, flesh tone from the last kind of painting set that GW had it out. Um, the metals are done. I, what I did with the metals this time was instead of just using like a metal wash, let me see if I can find what I used. Um, I used. Is a lead belcher? I can't remember. I think it's lead belcher, and then I usually put null and oil over it. But instead, I went with uh, Drakenhof. Get out of there. Drakenhof Nightshade. It has like a slight little blue twinge to it when you put it over metal. Um, and I think it's, it has a little bit more to the metal colour instead of just being like a dark and black. So it was kind of fun to use that for the first time it came out really well the skull and the horns were done with Zandri dust and um, darkened it then with agrax or shade and then what i did was instead of trying to highlight all this up because jesus christ i can't highlight for shit what i did was i dry brushed ushabti bone over it um, and then instead and then i went a little bit higher i went with if i can find the paint uh ultuan ultuan i think it's pronounced ultuan gray on it and it came out really nice. I'm happy with the with the with the skull and the horns especially. Uh, the staff. Now the staff is, as you can see, it's just kind of plain metal, kind of paint effect on it. Nothing too special. But the reason for that, instead of trying to make it, a, instead of trying to make it like too magical looking, I because it has a big lump of warps on on the bottom of it here and on his forehead as well. And I tried to give it. That slight glow effect by dry brushing around it with a, I think it was goblin green. It was the old kind of paint that I, just the only kind of green I have left uh, that's that bright. Um, I dry brush just around the area a little bit and I think it kind of works. It's not too bad. Um, so that's why I didn't really go with a magical looking weapon. I left it, I think it's called a glaive. I left it just a plain kind of metal colour. But the warstone on the bottom of it came out pretty nice. If I can get it to focus on it. It's focusing on the tail for some reason. There we go. So that was kind of done with... I think... What's that? Waff Lesh. Uh, green. And then darkened down. What I actually had to do was... If I can find it up here. Uh, no, that's the right one. Where's the other one I have? There it is. I don't have a green wash now or a green shade. So what I had to do was... Get this really old Taraka green... A little focus on it, and um, that I've had for oh my god for so long, and it was actually gone all thick and sticky on the bottom. So I had to add a little bit of water to kind of loosen it up a bit, and I put that um over the wog flesh, and I dry brushed like a couple of highlights of white on it, just to make the edges stick out a little bit more. So it kind of he doesn't it kind of it doesn't look like a glow on effect. It doesn't look too strong, but there's enough on it to make it look like. Like a, a lump of warp stone. Um, the only thing, and I mentioned this before in one of the previous videos, his tail isn't, he didn't come with a tail. So, this is from the newer Vermin Lord kit. So, it's kind of like a nice mixture of 
old meets new just a little bit with the tail but it fits them really nice you wouldn't even notice that it's not from this kit um, and then obviously the tip of the tail is going to be painted last because when you're painting this guy he's on like a big lump of cork here and when you're painting him the tail you know as you can see there it keeps hitting off the table so it's very awkward to paint this guy at some points um, but I have been working on the base uh, I think it's a 32 millimeter size base. I should have measured it before I started. But what I did was I put a big lump of cork on the bottom. I wanted a kind of like a scenic base, but anything that I had it was kind of too big. So I took this kind of a fence part with a pillar from the old Gardener Moore kit, and I put a lump of cork on it. And then there, if you can see, what's the name I used? A Grelin Art. Maybe if I zoom in a little bit, you might be able to see it. It mightn't be fully dry by now. But I put a grill and art over it. You know, you see the kind of the crackle effect on it. Um, and that's what, I, that's what I'm going to be basing that on. Um, the way he's going to be standing on it is he's going to have a foot here and he's going to lean it onto it. So he'll kind of be like that on it. If that kind of makes sense. But he'll be facing that way. But originally I had... What did I have? I had one of the... Let me see if I can find it here. I was going to add another little piece in from the new Vormenlord kit was this. I can't remember what the name of it is. It's kind of like this magic globe thing that it, that one of the Vormenlords has. And I was wanting to put it kind of here. I put it kind of like a magic colour effect on it. But I, I wanted to have a bit more scenic base on it. So when I put this one together, I really didn't know where to put this. If I put it here... I think it looks kind of out of place. It's kind of like why is there a magical orb under like a crushed fence. So I was thinking of when I looked through my little bits of rats that I have here. Um, let me see if I can find the guy that I had. Yes, this guy. Now this is going to be pretty... This guy is really small so this might be a little bit hard to get perfect here. I might put him here, and I might put another one or two rats just underneath it to kind of look like there's rats with him running around as well. I think that is a little bit better for, for what I'm going for. If I just put another rat maybe here, or maybe on the other side of a hair, look like they're all running along with him into battle. I think that will look really nice, and hopefully it'll work out when I put him on it. Um, the only thing is, when I put him on the base, I have to be careful because he's very heavy. Um, I might almost have to pin him here and then glue him on because I can glue him to the fence here but it's not really strong here so the strong point really has to be on his right foot on the back part so that has to be like uh, that almost just has to be glued by itself I probably wouldn't even want to glue it here unless I had to but um, I'll wait and see he'll be going onto that base pretty much as soon as it's done because I only really have the tail for this guy left um, I'm trying to think is there anything left. I have to finish off the top of the blade um, because of the mistake I made on it. But that's not going to take too long. Um, and then obviously the hoofs here need to be painted. Because I didn't paint any of them because they're, they're so close to the glue and it might get chipped when I try and take them off the base. But I absolutely love this guy. I can't wait to get him on this little scenic base. I can't wait to put him on the shelf with the rest of the Skaven army. It's going to be so cool. I honestly can't wait. I love this guy. Look at this. Oh, it's a pity he's not bigger because I'd love to use him just as a vermin lord but putting him on a big base to go with the newer ones just doesn't work out but definitely I could use him as like a Skaven general, a Skaven warlord, something like that um, a Greyseer definitely because they, do, they are wizards, well they were and you're like, yeah they are, the new, let me think the new, yeah vermin lords are wizards as well, well some of them anyway but I'm enjoying painting this guy, let me know what you guys think um, I can't wait to get him off this base because when I'm painting him, like it, he can very easily fall over and get chipped. So when I'm painting him, I have this on the bottom, this bubble wrap stuff on the bottom of the desk. So if he does fall over or if I'm painting him like this and the fingers or the, the, the kind of the staff starts hitting off the table, at least it's hitting the bubble wrap and not chipping on me. But I um, absolutely love this guy, like I said before. Um, make sure to let me know what you guys think as well. Make sure to hit the like button, comment and subscribe if you haven't. And once again, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next video.